G'day everyone, Matt Elder Family Bricks here, and today we're going to have an extensive look over this Super Mario Lego compatible Peach's Castle by LQS set 67601. We'll look at the features of the set, a time-lapse speed build, and examine the instructions. We'll look at the design and consider where it originated from, along with our usual build experience, playability, displayability, and value discussions. Following on from this, we will sequentially look at the build after each bag to get a better sense of the internals and construction process. Finally, we will leave off with a few little issues we found with the build. This video is brought to you by McCatsum Holiday Homes in Margate and Broadstairs. Great for a week's holiday or a weekend escape, being just over an hour east of London, UK. Treat yourself to amazing sunsets, a Lego wall or great food. Visit www.macatsim.com and mention this YouTube video and we'll look after you. We'll start off by going through a run through of everything that is included and pretty much everything you see here came with it. So start off with the uh, Mario figures. You actually get two of them and each of them come with two little Goombas. Just got them lying around here. You then also have a little Mario Kart go kart, which more for display than anything else, because you can obviously have him sort of standing up, but that's not ideal. And if you try to sit him down, because of the way that these pieces are in here, you can't actually get his legs under there. So maybe if you tweak the design on that a bit, you'd be able to do that. Following on from that, you then have the Bowser's type airship. It's a nice little cool build, getting all the different angles and different directions. The only thing being this propeller is more display than anything because it's stuck there. But maybe if you put a, a longer length Technic pin type thing on there, you'd be able to get that to turn properly. Minor little detail, however. Then if we're looking at the main structure itself, you sort of in the front of it here, a little bit of a, a platform where you can just have a few little bits and pieces. And these are on some hinges, so you can also just move them slightly. So if they're like that, you know, it looks a little bit flat. And then just angling them back a bit, and you get a little, little bit more dynamicism to it. And then in the back, you have the main castle itself, which obviously got a couple of wings, and then goes across a little drawbridge, and then the main center tower and spire in there. And just in case you weren't aware, it's a super castle, and you sort of see it's bending there. I'm not 100% thrilled with the weight on that, but yeah, it works for what it is. In terms of minifigs, it comes with two Marios that are identical and then four little Goombas. So it's great that you're able to get some sort of minifigures within this. However, it would be nice to have a bit of variety and rather than having two the same. And these minifigs seem to be custom ones, which I've got other ones before, such as these six here. So you have, you know, Mario, Luigi, Fire Mario, Wario, Luigi, and then Fire Mario. So rather than getting the two Marios here, if they could have had some mixture of that, ideally you'd want a Princess Peach, but I haven't actually seen one of those yet. Looking at some of the closer little details in here, you've got this nice little brick built waterfall and getting that sense of water splashing up. Some little stylized tree there. And again, it sort of moves around a little bit on that hinge and some nice little texturing to give it a sense of rocks and waterfalls. Then coming along to the main sort of entryway, what would it be without a question mark block or its own little tree as such. These here are all little stickers that you've got to try to align up somewhat. And then on a question mark block too, you actually have stickers on the sides which go over two bricks, which is not ideal, but that's just the way that they chose to get through that and achieve that effect. Coming a little bit further around, you've got a bridge. Again, that's also on a hinge, so you can move that slightly. This is all one solid piece and the brick built bridge itself initially when you're putting it together it feels a bit flimsy but then it all comes together and it's actually solid and rigid and again a few more stickers there to give that wood texture coming along you've then got a cannon pointing at the castle it does have a limited range of movement there enough to give the feel and for what it needs to be Sitting behind this main sort of front row of stuff is then a brick built little arch bridge and that's done nicely there. Give you that sense of it being curved leading up to the main door and then coming on through there you can see it goes up to a balcony with that iconic sort of sticker of Peach itself. That is actually on an opaque wall panel. So it would have been nicer if it had been on a clear one because then at least possibly if you put in the light behind it and add a light kit to it, it would really come out and give that stained glass effect. Then just moving up a little bit further, you've got a lot of this sort of tiling detail to try to get that sense of 
the roof and the spires and it's all done really quite well before you're coming up to the main spire and again coming across to that little sign off there in the clouds to get this nice little angle in here you actually can open up either side of these wings as such and you actually spend most of the time when you're building it it's like that and then right at the end you can go through and close it up and you've got some nice little details in here you've got a little enemy there then in here you've got just sort of like a water area little detail and then if you go over to the other side same sort of little thing character there meant to be one of those little bonbons but the face sticker is probably the wrong one it's more like a cooper kid and same sort of thing again if you come in here you've got just like a little area there which would be like a grass little green hill type area and coming around to the back it's fully enclosed and it has a nice finishing off of the detail so it's not like you're just looking at something from the front and the back's a weird dollhouse with all sorts of unfinishedness and weird colors so it can work 360 in the round and then on the spires themselves are actually on little hinge joints so they can move slightly into position and just give that that more curve feel rather than just sort of being a complete rather than just having a whole bunch of building structure elements that are all perpendicular to one another and the base continues that idea of just having water so it's like it's got its own little moat around it it reminds me very much of the uh, castle in the forest and the way that that base was built up which I mean being another castle is it really surprising being a castle one would anticipate then asking well how does it compare with say the Disney castle so obviously put them here side by side and you can see that it is significantly a scale smaller this Disney one feels obviously Obviously much more like a minifigure scale whereas this one feels a lot more compact the plus side of that being is that you know putting this on a shelf and finding a space is relatively easy whereas something like the Disney one which is you know quite tall and goes a fair way up you do need a lot more shelf space and footprint to be able to have that one around but certainly if a Princess's Peach's castle is done having built it at this scale maybe one would be greedy but it'd be nice to see it at sort of more of a Disney castle type scale so we'll go through now and just have a little bit of a look at the time lapse start off by building the main sort of structure on a water type base obviously being a castle going to be around a moat and then you're building out one of the wings on either side from there it's just a matter of going through and building up the different uh, floor level and starting to introduce into each of the wings just a slightly different sort of little vignette type background sort of scene and then going through now and building up each of the four turrets. They're quite fun little builds and you just really got to pay attention because there is some asymmetry within the whole thing then putting them in there going it through now just continuing to build up some of the walls and being an odd type width size number it's always uh, interesting just having the number of pieces that you've got now going through building up some of the roof elements and the main center sort of portico with the stained glass it's interesting the stained glass you're actually putting a sticker on on it's three wide onto a four so it's slightly offset and going through now and doing the roof which you've got all these little angular pieces so a fair bit of repetition to go through and then the same sort of thing here going through and building out sort of little individual modules and then having some angular pieces interdispersed into them before putting onto the top of the dome building up the super castle flower cloud scene going through here and now building out the front landscape in terms of the waterfall and then just the side connecting bit to the drawbridge adding in some of the stickers trying to get those all lined up correctly going through doing that little bridge itself and now the little sort of land with the cannon on it some of the trees with the question mark block going in as well and now going through just quickly doing the cart doing up the airship which was kind of cool and fun but lots of little fiddly pieces to be dealing with and just having to really watch that and be on top of what's happening there and then we'll go through and finish up with the actual super mario character himself and a nice sort of little image there of the whole build all together lqs number six seven six zero one 
Superlario. The one thing I do note with these photographs is that these colors have all been slightly tweaked. This is more of a coral color, whereas this is giving it more of a sort of flat pink flesh color here, which is not quite right. And the greens are more of a lime green, like these are too too deep and too saturated. But just having a look through the actual instructions themselves, each step is actually really quite dense. There's a lot to do in each one, so I find it's much like technique builds where you need to go through and pull all the pieces out first because if you miss stuff, it's pretty easy to do. And then each new bag that you have has then got a number on it. And when it says bag, when you open it, there's usually three or four bags within each one. And it's one of these interesting ones where it highlights to you each step the pieces you need for it. But then when it goes to the next step, all those pieces go out to this gray. So that can take a little bit of getting used to initially at first. The other nice thing I do like with it is that for some of the bigger pieces, it actually tells you the size of what they are, which particularly for some of the tiles, that becomes quite handy because then you can readily, sometimes from an image, you can't tell whether it's a, a 1x3 or 1x4 in terms of when you're building how it feels it feels like a pretty advanced mock like there's quite a number of steps where you've got anti-gravity and you sort of need to just put things in and then just have it uh piece all together with the next step following it and they've obviously tried to keep the page count down so for things like this you'll build each of the four turrets in the previous step and then it will then tell you here it basically gives you the turret as the number of the last step as to where to put them and I have found there are some mistakes in here. Sometimes um, it will say times four when you're actually only doing it times three. And then other times it might just have one or two pieces missing off. So you really do need to go through and look at what you're actually building. Most of it is symmetrical. Everything is pretty much stickers. And with the stickers, the edges go tight up to the actual pieces themselves. So it's not like you've got much space to play it wasn't until you had bag six I found you actually had your first leftover piece, which happened to be one of these little tooth type pieces. So pretty much up until that point, you used every single piece and there was nothing left over. So if you do end up with leftover bits, there's a good chance that you've actually missed something, which is a really weird feeling considering normally you're used to having a couple little bits left over. And a lot of times they'll have like really dense steps. So you're doing quite a lot here. And these little wedge pieces here are floating in space until you put the ones on top to connect them together. And sometimes when you're joining things together, it's really difficult to know exactly how you're lining things up. So there is a little bit of guesswork and trying to put things in and sort of getting to a point where if you did it the wrong way, you'd have stuff floating in midair. And particularly once you start getting down to here you then have some of these hinge pieces when you join them together you're actually joining different colors in that step they're different but then in the previous step they're actually the same colors so something just to be a little bit cautious of and for this question mark block when you put the stickers on the side you can sort of see there's two two by one bricks in there your stickers actually going to join over the top of them which the clutch power on the pieces in this set is quite strong stronger than one of your main brands but by the time you get through building it, I'm not sure you'd really want to be taking it apart. And then even when you get to the last page, it still has those wings on the building pushed out to the side. And there's no sort of description or thing to tell you to push them in like that. But I think as you get to the end of building, that'll become pretty obvious. You just need to be a little bit cautious of making sure that these longer tile pieces are high enough up and giving enough clearance so you can have the wings come back in and sit under there easily. So in terms of design, it seems to have originated from this rebrickable design by S. Cosi. And they also have this Instagram page, which gone through and checked it out as well. And they have the breakdown of it. And what they provided was the stud.io file down for download. And if you go down, it then makes you know pretty clear that uh, they believe the design was stolen by Lepin and sold from there, which is probably the one which I've gotten a hold of. Now, the big challenge with this one is that this has been designed digitally. So a lot of these color combinations of parts, particularly when you go into the inventory, the parts don't actually exist and you just get a whole bunch of different errors in here. And then when you scroll through it, you know, it's either rare colors or wrong colors. And then particularly some of the uh, blue ones that they've got right down here. 
doesn't even exist. So I had originally downloaded that stud.io file, which is this one here, and spent hours going through and changing all the colors to ones which would work in the hope of just being able to source the parts off BrickLink in itself. The challenge that you had, particularly for some of these roof ones here, is getting them all in the same color it was quite difficult. And then also too, just looking at it and trying to match up some of the intended colors. You know, what type of brick is this? Is this sort of like a tan? or is it a different one is this more of a white is it a gray so I had actually gone through and spent hours and then also to going through you trying to break it down into sections because this is largely just a digital file it doesn't have instructions per se and then what I found was once I was able to get them to realistic parts which may possibly have worked then having a look at actually ordering them this was going to be about 300 pounds at least which is pushing the better part of 400 US dollars so when you start looking at that that starts to become prohibitively expensive so given all those challenges given what the chinese company has done has that then become a derivative work or a transformative work or something similar because you just can't go straight from this and start building it just doesn't work but full credit back to the original designer because there's some really cool building techniques in it and it looks quite good and compared with what the official release is coming down the line this is able to satisfy that itch so Escozy has done brilliant work to get it to this point and it's fantastic that this is out there and actually exists and it's been great to be able to actually build it and realize it. In terms of build experience, this is pretty good. There's obviously a lot here and a lot of different techniques and there's a huge variety of stuff and things to do. You know, you've got airships, go-karts, sort of, you know, some bits of landscaping, then the main sort of building itself. For the most part, the instructions are pretty good. A couple of mistakes here and there, but each step is quite dense which does mean that there's only 54 pages in the instruction book, but that covers, you know, a couple of thousand pieces. So if the steps were all spread out, the instruction book could then quite conceivably be, easily be a telephone type thick book. You know, just given the nature of the building, there are some things which are sort of symmetrical. Sometimes they're sort of mirrored, so there's subtle differences. You know, even in the spires, you build sort of four or five of them, but they're all slightly different. You know, it can get a little bit tedious at times with some of these teeth pieces here, just trying to get them all on the roofs. But all in all, it's quite nice. The only thing I would say, though, is sometimes building some of those wings in the back there, because it's coming from a narrow base and fanning out, you sometimes with some of these other pieces here, when you're trying to get them to sit in, you've really got to hold the other part, because if you're pushing down on it, it's quite easy that if you're not supporting it, the whole thing's just going to push down. It's going to flip over or start shearing in the wrong place. In terms of playability, I certainly think that there's, with the characters and the different vehicles and that, there is some scope for playing with it. But the main thing, I guess, the concern would be is the scale for the minifigures is a little bit out, like he's tall than the archway door. And it's not necessarily like a doll's house where the back is empty. Okay, these parts here do open slightly, but they're more just to house sort of little mini vignettes and things. And it certainly wouldn't rule out playability aspects to it, but it's just not well suited and set up for that. And even just little things like not being able to sit the like minifigure probably in the go-kart does sort of limit what you can do with that. But there's enough sort of spaces here that you can move the characters around, have them doing little things and being able to create different scenarios. In terms of displayability, this set is great for that. And I think it's more geared towards that as opposed to being able to play with it. You're going to have enough of the nods and references to the various elements within Super Mario to be able to pick out what it is. And given that this castle is probably not going to be made anytime officially in this sort of a format, re really representing what it is as opposed to a more abstractionist, loosely based level. There's a lot here to like and enjoy and be able to tickle the eye and move in and out of different spaces and areas. So in terms of value, there's about 2,600 pieces here. What would you expect to pay for something like this? I'll give you a chance to think in five, four, three, two, one. This was £79 shipped from China to UK, which is less than $100 US. So for the amount of stuff here and variety and everything, it's actually pretty good value. The main part of the structure is all pretty solid. It's not particularly hollowed out. The castle works all the way in the round, and there's a lot of variety of stuff and different techniques and different ways you can configure it and display it. So this is how it came to us. It's quite heavy. It's a couple of kilograms. So let's uh, get into it and see what we've got. So everything is in, wrapped up pretty tight. Looks like we've got some instructions as well, which is good. Let's get into it and see the bags and things. So 
So this is everything that's included. You've got 12 bags, all numbered, and then a set of instructions, looks like some stickers, and then two little buildable Marios, and from classic space days, I think of those as little rocket boosters. And it's good that the, uh, the six has got the line under it, so you can tell the difference between six and nine. Otherwise, they all look, you know, standard, pretty wrapped, as you'd expect. And then the instructions themselves, because um, it's been sitting in the way that it was wrapped like that, you can see it's got a few tear marks in it, but um, nothing too horrendously bad. But it looks like a quite an interesting build, so uh, let's get into it. Just a quick look at the sticker sheet before it gets applied, because I think um, in particular that's probably going to be on the main sort of stained glass type window. And just looking at some of the other ways they've managed to achieve the graphics you'd associate with it. So at the end of bag one, you're starting to build out the main foundations. So you built the main central shaft and then starting on each of the wings. These are actually separate, but I would imagine they're going to join together somehow. And the thing about the build so far is that these are all very solid pieces. They haven't really skimped on, you know, hollowing out the inside structure or anything. So it's starting to make it quite heavy. And the other thing building is getting used to the subtle color shifts because they're not one-to-one -one matches with other construction blocks. And each step that you do is actually quite dense with lots of pieces to go on. So you really need to be paying attention. By the end of bag two, you've attached each of these wings here, which initially I thought were going to bend backwards. So I had to double check the way this hinge works, but they're actually going to come forward. So I think that's starting to build out the bulk of that, which would be pretty cool. So, and while it's kind of symmetrical, it's kind of different. So obviously this is more of a grassy type land, whereas this is going to be more of the underwater sort of world and starting to get some nice details on the front here. And the internals here actually got some space there, which you may not see on the final build. So it'll be interesting to see where that ends up. Bag three was mostly about the spires, which they are very, very similar builds, but they are slightly different, the two in the middle are slightly higher than the ones on the outside, and then just because of the symmetry of it, you have the hinges facing in different directions, which I think mainly so that when you spin them around like that, then they can just push in slightly and give it a more sort of rounded off feel. For bag four, you just continue building up this gray, just finishing out a few little bits of these green detail pieces there, but all starting to come together. The one thing you have to be so careful of is that when you're pushing on pieces on this side, it starts putting a fair amount of torque on this here, so you've got to try to hold it down there, otherwise it just really turns in awkward ways. So when we got to the end of bag five, we're really starting to get to the top layer and level of the sort of stonework, and also starting to put some decorative elements on it, and also to a couple of these little shields with stickers on them and a couple of enemies and you know, I think that's meant to be more of a bomb bomb but it's got like one of the Cooper kids faces and then also one of those the other thing with the stickers when you put them on they're quite tight there's no little excess spaces around the edges so you do need to line them up pretty well now I've built out the roof sections here on both sides which is like a, a sort of fish scale pattern and the main portico from the front and also to part of the bridge which has a nice little arch curve feature to it as well. So now we've done another couple of bags and mainly working on this center tower here to in sort of this part and plus that part and then you also have this floating super castle star thing here. Not super convinced about that because yeah it's got a fair bit of weight to it and it bends it down but not gonna lie the most satisfying thing is definitely closing that up there and then you're starting to get that full castle look. So bags 10 and 11 built some cool little details which will go out the front of the castle. So very nicely done here, little waterfall, brick built, uh, nice little trees and that sort of style. These have got a couple of hinge pieces so they can also move around as well. That's it, right there. And uh, of course what would it be without a question mark block and a little brick built bridge which at first felt really flimsy but then once you put it all together it's actually quite rigid and a cannon for obviously shooting cannonballs or mario if we come around to the other side you got the clips in there which will then clip onto the front of the bridge here on the castle and of course trying to do it one-handed is never quite easy so you get this sort of idea that's going to clip into those two bits there and then this will lift over the top and sit, sit in there. 
and just looking at what it's called, Super Mario. The individual bags, the plastic that they use is quite thick, so you can try to pull them apart like a packet of crisps or chips or something like that. But generally, I find it's handy to have a blade so you can just cut straight into it. One slight issue you've had is with these pieces which go on the base here, had to replace some of the ones which came in the set with the actual uh, another construction type because these don't actually have enough friction to hold these in properly You can see it's not even picking it up. So it's just a little bit undersized. So I've had to replace those five length bars with other ones and You can see there the clutch power is much greater and it just holds on otherwise they just fall off If you've enjoyed this video hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing to the channel a share also never goes astray What do you think of this version of Peach's castle sound off in the comments below? Alternatively leave the comment peach and we'll know you've watched the end of the video Here are some other videos you might like to watch made specifically for you or at least the YouTube algorithm thinks so That's it from us here at family bricks. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one